of visitors. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the National Aquarium and to Discovery Channel Shark Week Shark Cam. My name is Heather. I'm an educator here at the aquarium. I'm over here in the corner with a lot of my shark fans, and we are so excited for the 28th year of Shark Week. I couldn't be happier because I have one of the Shark Week Shark Fin Ambassadors with me, Holly Bourbon, who is the National Aquarium Curator of Fishes. Hi, Holly. Hi, Heather. Hi, everybody. Hi. We are thrilled that you were selected as one of the fish ambassadors. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, what that means, myself, I'm one of many that have been chosen to actually be a fin ambassador, which means I not only care about the conservation about sharks, which you'll hear about today, but I'm also obviously a big fan of sharks. They're a really big part of the ecosystem, really big part of our oceans, and many parts of the world. And so we're really excited that I'm here today to help introduce Shark Week, which is coming up next week, starting on July 5th. Well, here at the aquarium, we love sharks. We think they're majestic, interesting fascinating animals and I know we have a lot of fans that are listening to us and watching us so if you have a question to ask Holly we will be answering those questions live at the end of the chat so be sure on Facebook or Twitter to send in your questions to hashtag shark diver chat hashtag shark diver chat and we'll be answering those questions in just a few minutes so Holly can you tell me a little bit about the sharks that are in there with you right now? Yes. Now behind me, the species that you're going to see that this exhibit was named for are called black tip reef sharks. There are over 18, well there are 18 of them in here, so there's many. And then we have a few other species as well that are a little less noticeable at times. We have two wobegong shark species ornate and tassel and we have a female zebra shark so we have several different species and they're also very different in how they look and how they feed so it's a really neat exhibit because you get to see a lot of different sharks in one place that's fantastic now when we think about sharks the first thing that comes to mind is that big great white that white shark right yes but You've already told us about four more kinds of sharks. How many kinds are there? There are anywhere between, say, over 475 to even as many as 500 species. And I'm giving you that range because they're still discovering new species. So if there's over 400 kinds of sharks, and even in this exhibit here, we're seeing different shapes. I'm guessing they eat differently, too. Is that right? Correct. Usually... Shark's teeth are very indicative of what they eat. So some sharks have what's called almost like a fork and knife set up, where the top is like the fork and it stabs it, and the bottom is more like the knife where it saws. Other sharks have very short, crushing type of teeth, so they can eat more bottom dwellers, invertebrates, say crabs, and that kind of thing. And is it true that there are even filter-feeding sharks that are going to eat things floating in the ocean like plankton? Yes. Like we have filter-feeding types of whales, there are filter-type feeding type of sharks, like a whale shark, which probably most people are familiar with. But in cooler waters, you can also get basking sharks. So since they're different sizes, I know some of the smallest sharks are as big as your hand, even when full-grown. They can't all be top predators, or what we like to call apex predators. So what role do they play? Well, in their ecosystem, or the area they occupy, they can still fulfill a role where they are keeping things in check and balance. So even they may, they may not be, say, as large as a great white, which 
vegetables people again are familiar with they still occupy an area in their ecosystem say a, a near shore reef system or very deep waters so just like the sharks we also are part of that ecosystem so I'm sure there are things that you would recommend people do to keep the whole ecosystem healthy in addition to sharks right yes there are several things you can do and two in particular I'll talk about but basic recycling uh, obviously conservation of water and other things but things you can also do to learn more about sharks and even help support are called something called a marine protected area uh, worldwide there are many of those and what's so important is they not only uh, protect the actual sharks in them, but all the animals in them. So it's a marine protected area versus just one species. And then so, another important one is sustainable seafood, which you'll see aquariums, including ourselves, actually have little cards or guides that you can get to help you make smart choices at the grocery store for your fish uh, and, and also your shellfish and or at a restaurant. Well, I know we have a lot of seafood lovers and both watching the seafood and, and eating the seafood. So if you want to learn more, we can go visit Discovery Channel's site, sharkweek.com slash save sharks. And there's so many great ideas there, in addition to checking out our website at the National Aquarium. Now, you mentioned um, marine protected areas. What does that look like? Have you ever been to one? Probably the one I've been to most often is in the Florida Keys, John Pennycamp Park. So what you have are protected areas where fish and wildlife are protected in specific zones or habitat areas, where it means there may be boating regulations very specific. You, you will not be able to necessarily spear fish or uh, go actual fishing. You may not be able to collect animals. So it basically tries to keep, it's like a national park. Uh, land-wise, uh, you know, land-based. That's great. There's over a hundred of those, and they're worldwide. So they're an important place for sharks to thrive and have their babies. Even if we don't ever get to see that spot, we can come to a place like National Aquarium and see what that ecosystem would look like. It's important for us to take care of sharks so they can, in turn, help the other animals in the ecosystem. I do want to encourage everybody who hasn't had a chance to submit a question to Holly to do that by using hashtag shark diver chat because we're just about to get to some questions from our fans on Facebook and Twitter. Okay, great. One of the first questions we have is, is it true that shark teeth are actually scales? Yes. They're basically like a, a, a dermal denticle, which is what the scale is on a shark. So they're made of that same material. And as many folks may know, sharks can lose thousands of teeth over their lifetime. Uh, say, for example, a sand tiger shark, which we have here at the National Aquarium in another exhibit, you actually can see it's almost a conveyor belt where the teeth get worn or may break off. A new one will uh, replace it. And I'm guessing that's why you can find shark teeth sometimes on the beach or even at the bottom of some of our exhibits, right? Correct. We have a question from someone who's with us here at the National Aquarium right now. I've got a gentleman named Owen who is going to ask you a question. Okay. Holly, how did you get into marine biology? That's a very popular question that I get because it's a unique job. I actually started uh, doing volunteer and or internship work at the New England Aquarium, so another aquarium in the Northeast, and I did this during college, and there's lots of opportunities at aquariums for volunteering and such, and because I did that, I got to really like the diving aspect, and I got certified to dive, and then things sort of took off from there. So volunteering is a great way to get started, either at your school, at a local animal rescue place, or even at an aquarium or a zoo. So Owen, you're going to do it, right? Yes. Thanks, uh, Owen. All right. We also have a question from Andrew, who is here with us at National Aquarium, is a big Shark Week fan. So Andrew has a question for you. What shark species lives the longest? Oh, that's a great question. Let me think about that. I would say from 
my knowledge base, because there's lots of sharks, nurse sharks can be very long-lived. We actually had one here that I worked with in my former job that I believe was over 30 years old, even could have been closer to 40. So I would say that potentially animals in captivity would live longer than in the wild. But uh, there are, is research that people do to actually uh, age sharks. And they actually use um, their spines as far as looking at the rings in them, like the rings in a tree. That was a great question. Do you have another question, Andrew? He was wowed by that answer. And, you know, I want to add to what Holly said. There are some estimates that whale sharks could live over 80 years, but because they are all over the ocean, it's hard to know if that's true or not. That, that could be. But most sharks are between 20 and 30 years old. We have another question, and this is coming in from Twitter. We've got, can you explain why there are more shark sightings being reported in the New York or New Jersey area? Okay. Well, if you mean around this time of year, you certainly are having a lot more people in the coastal regions. Obviously, it's summer. People are going to the beach. So that's part of it. Obviously, if there is also food near inshore, near beaches, uh, you'll actually find sharks will be attracted to that. You know, sharks are really, you know, they are obviously hunting when they're swimming. So it could be a, those two reasons. That was a great question. Holly, I know there's a lot of great programming coming up starting Sunday night. I know where I'm going to be after I leave the aquarium. I'm going to be on my couch watching Discovery Channel Shark Week with all my friends at the aquarium. I'm just wondering, can you tell us about the programming and some of the experts that we may see? Well, I was actually looking at the website today uh, just to see some of the other ambassadors, and there's quite a few. In fact, there's one that's a good friend of mine named Greg Scoble. He's from the uh, New England area because I used to work with him. He's one of many. Uh, there's actually really uh, another young man in, included in that list. Um, but basically what you're going to see is an emphasis on shark conservation with the programming. And it, it's there are really a lot more sharks out there than great whites. There are mako sharks, hammerhead sharks, megamouth, seven gill, you know, all the other species that you may hear less of, uh, like a thresher shark, but are just as interesting, really unique, and just as important for our ecosystem and for God to, to you know, learn about and conserve. That is fantastic. I couldn't agree more. We have another question. What is the oldest species still alive today? Okay, if I think I understand the question, oldest species, many of the species we know today actually have evolved over millions of years, over 400 millions of years. So I would need to probably do a little bit more research to find out, but you know, great white sharks have evolved from you know uh, megadalon and other species. So there, you know, again, there's uh, in general sharks have evolved over time, and they're very old themselves. That's right. Uh, we have a question coming in about being with sharks, either in this exhibit at the National Aquarium or even in the wild. Have you experienced any iffy situations with sharks and divers? You're having me dig back in my memory bank. I think when I worked at my other job, certainly if... Um, let me think on this for just a moment. I'm trying to picture the times of in the water. I've been in the water with uh, mako sharks um, close by, but there was, a, there was a cage, and that's just for extra safety. I've been in the water with blue sharks and sand tiger sharks. You know, I will tell you, I don't ever think I ever found a time where I was truly, really scared where I wanted to come out of the water. If anything, learning the more you learn about sharks, I think it actually makes you even want to see them more and actually get to know them. Well, Holly, as one of the Finn ambassadors for Shark Week with Discovery Channel, I want to thank you for your time and for everyone who's been watching us on Discovery Channel Shark Cam or for those of us who are here together at the National Aquarium. Thank you so much. Be sure to keep saving sharks. And Holly, thank you so much. Yeah, have a great week and have fun watching uh, Shark Week. Bye, Owen and Andrew. Have a good visit. <laughs> Bye.